Hello and welcome to Zero to Game Dev Hero. Today we will finally create our first objects in Unity. From now on we will work in Unity most of the time. Let's populate our empty game world with some fancy game objects. But what exactly are game objects and how to make them? Let's first start with some theory. Every object in our game world is a game object. Game objects are not only visible objects. There are audio objects that play sounds, light is also placed as a game object, the camera is a game object, and many more things. So not only your characters and buildings are game objects. A game object consists of components. Those components add functionality to the game objects, because otherwise all objects would be the same. One of those components is transform. Transform gives the game object its position, rotation and scale in the world. Every game object must have a transform component. Other components are for example a mesh component that gives your game object a 3D mesh so that your object is visible as a 3D object in your world. The light and audio source component can turn your object into a light or an audio source. And C Sharp scripts can turn your object into whatever you want because you can write the logic of those components by yourself. You can add as many different components to your object as you want. In the editor we can create game objects here on the left side of the screen. You can right click in the hierarchy and this menu will pop up. There are a few pre-made objects that we can use. So for example we have a camera object. It has the camera component already attached so that we can directly use it. Or there are 3D game objects as well. Those objects have all components attached so that you can see them as 3D objects. But we can also create empty game objects and compose them by ourselves. But for now let's create a cube object here under 3D objects cube. Now you can see this object in the hierarchy and also in the game world. You have to give it a name. So let's name it player cube. Like this. When you click on this object you can see all the components attached to this object on the right side of your screen. We have the transform component here at the top that is responsible for the position, rotation and scale of our object. We have the mesh filter and mesh renderer. Those are responsible for displaying the object in the 3D world. For now you don't need to know what exactly they are doing. You just have to know that they are displaying your object in the world. And the cube also has a collider. We will talk in another video about the collider when we talk about physics. When we create an empty game object you will see that it only has a transform and nothing else. It's not visible in the world. But let's delete it for now. We don't need it at the moment. You can delete. We can delete the object for now because we don't need it. You can delete it here under the right click menu with delete or just with the delete key on your keyboard. We can change the position of our cube with the transform. So let's change it a little bit. So if you Change the position here, you will see that the cube is moving in the world. You can move it here, around or like this. You can also rotate the cube on all three axes. So the X, the Y and the Z axis. With the scale, you can just scale one of those axes. Like this. Those 3D meshes are very simple. If you need more complex ones, you should download some from the Asset Store or design some models by yourself with a 3D software. Blender is a good free one. You can check it out if you are interested. Now let's create a few objects and position them around in the world. The first thing we can do is to reset the cube so that it does not look that's screwed anymore, so you can just go here and click on reset. And it disappeared. 
Why? Because we have changed the position or reset the position to 0, 0, 0. And our view is not looking at those coordinates. So we can double click on the player cube and then you will go straight to the object in your scene view. Here you can turn your scene view around and you can view it from the top as well. You can zoom out and zoom in. And if you click on game, you can see how the cube looks in the camera. So let's go back to scene view. And here we can go to and we can create another object. Let's create another cube. This will be our floor. So let's call it floor. And we can move it down a little bit to minus one. And change the scale on the x axis to, for example, five. And on the z axis to five as well. And now we have a floor. You can move around here in the world and uh, you can turn it around. And yeah, you can see that now we have a cube and under the cube we have another object, a floor. You can switch between those two objects here on the left side. So if you click on player cube, you can see all properties for the player cube. And if you click on floor, you can see all the settings for the floor. Now we can create another object. Let's create a, let's create a sphere. We can move the object as well here in the scene view. So with those arrows, you can move it around. But it's not as precise as it would be with the transform numbers. So um, if you prefer that, I prefer that, you can move it around here. So now it's exactly the same position as the cube. And yeah, I don't know, we can move it for example, here. And we can duplicate the object with command D. You can see now here it is duplicated. We can put the name like it is and then move it, for example, here. It is very simple, but as a first step, it's pretty good. Our only problem is that nothing is moving and it's not really interactive. But let's change that in our next video. In our next video, we will learn how to create own components with C-Sharp and how coding in Unity works. If you like my content, I would appreciate a sub. And if you have any feedback or questions, leave a comment. See you next time.